Welcome to GrowthToFreedom.com, the show that brings you transformation, inspiration, and leadership. We're helping you connect the dots, see the blind spots, and get unstuck so you can go out and create more sales, more growth, more profits. More importantly, so you can go out there and have a bigger impact, have a bigger reach, and make a bigger contribution. Is that what you want? Well, if that's what you want, then you are going to love today's guest expert, today's show, today's episode. Why? What if you could find the key to attacking and going after what are called the five capitals? You know, see, what if there was a hidden capital that you were missing that was actually keeping you from being able to build your business, to grow your entrepreneurial empire, right? And what if just knowing how to connect the dots with those five capitals would help create more freedom, the freedom to be able to spend more time with your family, the freedom maybe to just get out of so much of the day-to-day of your business, where maybe you're running around wearing nine hats, right? Where the business consumes you. Well, what if you could get that freedom by simply getting in alignment with these five capitals? Now, why is this important to you? Well, we're at one of the most unique times in business history, aren't we? Right? And there is a storm coming over the next several months that if you're not ready as a business owner, if you're not ready as an entrepreneur, you just might not make it. We want to help you avoid that possibility. And today's guest expert is uniquely qualified to share with you how to weather that kind of storm, master the five capitals, as well as something that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Like, What's the biggest difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur? Like, do you know the difference? And do you know like how it might be holding you back, keeping you stuck by not truly knowing the difference between the two? Our guest expert, his name is Tony Rose. He's a founding partner of Rose, Snyder, and Jacobs. He uh, helps clients grow their business in a very smart way. Why? focusing on the finances, things like taxes, managing the the business, consulting, uh, working with closely held corporations, family-owned businesses, partnerships, and high net worth individuals, right? In addition, he focuses on helping high net worth families minimize their taxes. In other words, helps you with tax minimization strategies so you can grow your assets, so you can grow and be protected from some of these storms that are out there as it relates to the capital. So, Tony, how are you, my friend? It's great to have you. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I want to dive right in. By the way, thanks for making us part of your day today. If you want to come back to this episode, number one, grab a pen right now, grab a piece of paper, jot down some notes. Tony's going to share some amazing insights on the five capitals, the difference between business owners and entrepreneurs, and a whole lot more. If you want to come back to this episode, you can do that at growthtofreedom.com forward slash 330. That's growthtofreedom.com forward slash 330. If you never want to miss an episode, you can go to growthtofreedom.com forward slash subscribe. That's growthtofreedom.com forward slash subscribe. So, Tony, let's dive into it. You're the founding partner of Rose Snyder and Jacobs. Like, why are you doing like what you're doing today? Focused on finance, helping people with finances. I mean, you help small businesses with their finance. You help companies go public. You work with public companies. And yet you still have a down home feel that's really family oriented where you can work with a small business too, the little guy, if you will. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm, I, I was a small business. I am a small business. So I, I'm living your life. I, I always felt that preparing taxes and financial statements and the things that CPA do was not enough, was, was, was not enough for me and was not enough for my clients. So almost 30 years ago now, I started searching and learning, mostly as self-defense for my own business to understand how to grow my own business, because I was a really sleepy, really sleepy small business. In fact, some of your listeners, watchers might be consider themselves to be sleepy small businesses and and feeling like they're hitting what uh, the the noted author and coach Dan Sullivan calls a ceiling of complexity. 
And so I searched for that. And, and I discovered through reading a lot of writers, none of this is my own stuff. Well, maybe some of it is, but most of it is other people. And by watching and listening to other people, reading other people, I discovered there was so much more to business than chasing money. Mm. So if you're in business to earn money, you almost always don't earn money. Have you ever found that with you yourself or your friends? Oh yeah. In fact, a quick, quick story, Tony, like, cause this really hits home is in my early, I talk about it in my book, my first book that I had written a champion in the making is like the first probably five, six years. I was so enamored with chasing the money, like to get the finances out of the way. And I, it seemed like for me anyway, the harder I chased it, the further away it got, it became this elusive carrot. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and it, and it would get further and further away. And then finally I'd gotten to a point where I, I, I literally threw my hands up related to the money and I started focusing on some other things. Right. And I, we talk about it in our book, you know, a couple of things, mental, physical, social, spiritual, emotional, and then financial. What I found is when I let go of the financial focus and focused on those other things is actually when I started attracting more clients, growing the business, greater profitability, greater impact, right? And the finances became far more stable. And I know you, you have a paradigm around this related to the five capitals that I think fits in really well. So as you're listening or watching, I don't know if you can relate to what I share. This is a damaging confession. The truth is in the first few years, I was terrible at running a business, right? And I had to learn what to focus on overall. So Tony, speak to that a little bit as it relates to your five capitals. So, so what I really discovered is that money is almost a byproduct mm. of four other elements. And I included that in a, in a book, which at that time was called Five Capitals or Five Eyes on the Fence, uh, which I, I'm in the process of rewriting right now. It should be published later this year. The four capitals are born out of my examination of why it was so difficult to run my business. Mm. And, what I, and what I discovered through my reading was this, that there's actually four elements of any business or actually any personal life or any family life that, uh, that, that really, uh, if run well, creates money. And you don't have to be wanting, you don't have to be trying to create money. It just happens. And what are those four elements? Element number one is the humanness of the company, who the human beings are in that business. The second element is intellectual capital. What do those human beings know how to do that brings value to the world? The third element has to do with who you know, mm. social capital, who is it in your lives that help you get to where you want to go and who you deliver value to. And finally, and almost always more ignored than any of the other capitals is something I call structural capital, how you do it. So who you are, what you know, who you know, and how you do the things you do. Those are the four capital elements that you own in your business, whether you pay attention them to them or not. If you are bad at more than one of those three elements, you're leaking money for sure. On the other hand, if you're really pretty good in all four elements, you're going to make money and sustain your business in your life. So that, those are, that, that's what I discovered here. When we started paying attention to our people, our associates, how we gather and learn knowledge that we can deliver to our clients and how we, and how we deliver it to our clients, things started popping around here and we got very successful. And as you're listening or watching right now, like what would happen for you if you reverse engineered this framework that Tony talks about, right? Which is related to number one, the human being side, like the humanness of your business, right? Or the intellectual knowledge of your business. And what if you just improve these uh, a percentage in the next month or the next quarter, 
right? What would happen for your business if you focused on these four capitals or the who, the social or the relationship capital, right? Your people, right? Or what if you were able to focus on your structural capital and how you deliver what it is that you do, the value you provide to others? Like what would happen if you just improved and focused on these four things? I mean, for Tony, it meant the world for his business to grow where now they have over 50 or 60 employees approximately in their business where they help business owners and entrepreneurs like you, like me, and many others get their four capitals in alignment so that the financial side is protected, that it grows, that it's more of an asset that can work without you, without me, without them, right? How would that shift the game for you? How would that impact the game? Right now, Tony, I'm curious, like, what do you see are some of the biggest mistakes that most people make, you know, as they're looking at growing, you know, their fight, the financial side, if these are the four things that were, I'd, I'd love to actually go to the contrarian side. Like, what do you see, you know, either from your examples or, you know, some, you probably don't mention any names, but like, what do you see are some of the big mistakes most people make as it relates to these capitals, you know, when they start focusing on them when they start well <laughs> the not focusing on them is what the yes. big mistake is uh, uh, i i think that when you are trying to make your business better the the desire not to make a mistake is what can create the biggest problems mm. a business that runs defensively trying to not lose money trying to not fail is what almost sets you up for failure. Yes. So, so in all these four capital situations, you want to try things. Now, I think the most important capital for me right now is the structural capital, the way you deliver your value to your ultimate customer. Structural capital. I define structural capital is the way you do things that can be repeated that creates positive outcomes for yourself and your customers. The way you do it, that can be easily repeated, that creates positive outcomes. The best learning on how to do this is to try it, try something, and then if it doesn't work and it doesn't have the impact you want, try something else. And so, in fact, we have a process in our office, which we call quadrant planning. I wrote about that in my first book. The book's called Say Hello to the Elephants. And it's a a process for structuring the delivery of services or delivery of a product to anybody, anytime, in a repeatable way. The fourth quadrant in our quadrant planning model, which we call management or sustainability, is an evaluation of what we wanted to do for our client and whether that client got it done. And if they didn't get it done, how could we do it differently to have them get a better outcome? The fact that you create a process doesn't guarantee success, but you can't have success without a process. That's right. So that's what's, that's kind of, the biggest mistake I see is not wanting to make a mistake. And as you're watching or listening right now, number one, again, what if you got these four capitals in alignment, right? What would it do to the financial side for your business? Number two is what if, you know, along the way with the quadrant planning, you were able to come up with a successful process that allowed you to really tune into the management and sustainability of your business. And, and, you, know, you can look at that at all kinds of angles from your operations, your fulfillment, your uh, sales, your marketing, and a whole lot more, right? If you really dialed this in and applied what Tony's sharing with you, what, how would it you know, change the game for you as you're watching or listening right now? Now, I'm curious, Tony, you, know, you have an interesting way of looking at entrepreneurs and the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner. Speak to that a little bit. I worry a lot that that people say I have to be an entrepreneur. I have to be an entrepreneur. It's kind of been confused with being a business owner. I don't necessarily consider myself an entrepreneur. 
I am a business owner for sure. Those of you that might be watching or listening, you're maybe a business owner, but you might be feeling guilty that you're not an entrepreneur. Uh, or you might think I'm, there's something missing. After dealing with hundreds and hundreds of people that are business owners and entrepreneurs over a long career, I've discovered that entrepreneurs are different than business owners. And actually, entrepreneurs often are not very good business owners. Mm, so, what's the, so what's the distinction? Okay. An entrepreneur is really a disruptor of kind. In, 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 in kind. Uh, they are the, uh, they could be the class clowns. They could be the inventors that invent stuff. But generally in, in the trajectory of a business that's an entrepreneurial business, the entrepreneur and almost always someone to help that entrepreneur operate the business, start a business. The business gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What often happens in an entrepreneurial business that's successful on a long-term basis is that entrepreneur falls away. They fall away from the operation of the business because entrepreneurs generally don't play well with other people. Yep. So a smaller business where there's a, a limited number of people uh, who, where an entrepreneur's kind of craziness doesn't really affect them that much because they expect it. Um, uh, and entrepreneurs fail a lot too, by the way, you, an entrepreneur might try 10 businesses before they're successful. Um, a great business owner takes something that's already of value and actually makes it more valuable by delivering it in a better way, in a different way, maybe in a different cover. Um, so, so you can be a great business owner. But you don't have to feel like you need to disrupt, create new products all the time. You, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. And, I, and most business owners aren't, in my experience, Dan. Yeah, and it's it's fascinating. Quick story. We, we won't, won't spend much time because I want to focus on you, Tony. Now, by the way, as you're listening, you know, you're, as you're listening to Tony, who's one of the founding partners, again, RSJCPA is a, you know, a huge financial company that can help entrepreneurs and business owners maybe like you. Tony goes way beyond the numbers, doesn't he? Like if you've ever been in a place where you've worked with your financial team, where you just felt like, golly, I don't need you to just report what's going on in the past. I need projections. I need proactive financial planning. I need financial protection. I need to like, like what could I do to make the right move? In other words, proactive focus. You just might want to reach out to Tony and his entire team depending on where you're at as a business. If you're a small company looking to go public, if you're a company looking to you know, just get your finances in order, if you're you know, a high net worth family looking to you know, have other options, right? Because maybe if you found what a lot of clients that we've recommended to Tony have found, many times the financial team gets lazy or they just don't know how to look at something beyond the numbers to go forward instead of backwards, right? So if you feel that way, I encourage you, and we'll have resources, some links. Uh, stick around for the next few minutes because I know Tony's got an amazing gift that he wants to make available to you around these four quadrants that we've been talking about uh, today as well. And by the way, you can go check out what Tony and his company are up to at rsjcpa.com. That's rsjcpa.com. But quick story, Tony. A lot of people feel that like being an entrepreneur is sexy, right? And they look at someone like the, the late, great Steve Jobs, right? As the consummate entrepreneur. And I'm like him and he's the crazy wild guy, you know, the black sheep, et cetera, this, you know, this kind of iconic nature. And what people forget in many ways about Steve Jobs, yeah, there's a lot of that creativity, a lot of the fact that it's proven that he didn't play well with others. But what a lot of people don't know is that Steve Jobs actually got the idea for the Apple operating system from Xerox. A lot of people don't know that he literally got the blueprints from Xerox of the operating system. And then, like you said, took that idea and just added their, their piece to it to make it even better. And what was so funny is a lot of people don't know the, the full context of this story. Bill Gates kind of did the same thing with Xerox for their operating system. So both of them to a degree copied 
a system and then added their ingredients to it to, you know, make it unique, to make it theoretically better and so on. So a lot of times when you try to be a disruptor, when you try to be an innovator ahead of things, you actually will struggle to get success. It isn't until we look and go, okay, how do we engineer or reverse engineer other success? Like Tony's been talking about, you know, so why, you know, paying attention to these five capitals, why paying uh, attention to the four? I mean, Tony's worked with thousands, his company have worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of business owners and entrepreneurs, maybe like you to go, hey, I would avoid that and focus on this. So Tony, with that in mind, I'm curious, you know, as we look at, you know, the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner, like, and and our our discussion today on the five capitals, what would you, what would you throw out there? And there's so much, because I mean, you've just got a wealth of wisdom uh, as it relates to this stuff. Like, what would you recommend is like one to three action steps most business owners or entrepreneurs could take like right now to have an impact on their business, to also protect it from, you know, potential storms coming. Okay. Well, um, I'll start with a very accountant-esque <laughs> bit of advice. If you don't have numbers, you can't go beyond numbers. So, you need to place a great value on having books and records and numbers. Uh, that's good to help you file your taxes. It's also good because the numbers actually can be a weather vane as to whether your business is on the right course. Now, it, it, it's not only the amount of checks you write, the amount of deposits you have in your bank account. There might be the number of contacts you have with new customers. It might be the time it takes to fill an order. It could be the number of turns in your inventory. It could be any number of different kind of measurements, but if you don't measure, you can't get beyond the numbers. So that's number one. Second bit of advice is pay attention to your structure. Mm. Are you hitting the marks that you intend to with your clients? Are you delivering on time, whether it's a service or a product? Do you have the right products? that your clients are asking for. So do you have a, a supply chain that permits you to deliver value to your clients? So that's number two. And then, and then number three is you have to pay attention to your relationships. Mm. And I think that there's a number of relationships around you, your social capital that you need to pay attention to. The relationships with the people you work with, your employees and your partners. The vendors that you have, the people that supply you the goods that you need to deliver the value you deliver to your clients. Absolutely, your clients and your customers, they're very important. What do they need? Do you ask them, am I giving you what you need in the way you need it? And then fourth, and this might be counterintuitive, who your competition is and what they're doing in the market. You want to be sensitive to that. Now, you don't want to be, uh, it's a very small world. So you want to be very kind to your competitors. Uh, you can't have a relationship with your competitors without actually having a relationship. They can't be the enemy. Your competitors are not the enemy. In fact, you might be your biggest enemy to you. So those are the three things. Know your numbers, pay attention to your structure, pay attention to who you know in your social capital. And then your bonus was the fourth, which is competition, right? Which, by the way, like how cool would it be if you could actually take your competition and turn them into collaborative partners, right? Tony's been one of the best in the world at being able to do some of that and help others be able to do some of that uh, as well. Now, Tony, um, you've got a wealth of resources. You got some really top selling uh, resources, books, white papers, etc. If people want to learn more about you, you brought up the Say Hello to Elephants guide, which uh, you're making available. Uh, where can they go to learn more about what you're up to and get the Say Hello to Elephants book? Sure. Uh, understand more of these structures we're talking about and more. We're very happy to permit anyone to download a version of Say Hello to the Elephants by going to the website gobeyondnumbers.com. That's gobeyondnumbers.com. 
has uh, will we'll, we'll give you not only access, access to some of the other videos that I've done, but also uh, uh, an opportunity to download that book. Um, second thing is go to rsjcpa.com. Uh, there are a number of resources there about things like certified audits. If you're a business that wants to go public, things like that, we have wisdom about that. Plus, uh, I believe there's connection on that to my blogs as well. The other things that I'm thinking about, um, I actually even think about taxes too, Dan. I have a lot of opinions about taxes, uh, and sometimes that actually is uh, appears on our websites as well. So I want to encourage you to go get Tony's free book today. Say hello to the elephants, four steps to immediate clarity. Uh, solving problems and moving on in turbulent times. It's a number one seller for CEOs, business owners, and entrepreneurs. Maybe like you, you can go to gobeyondnumbers.com, gobeyondnumbers.com to get your free copy of this book. It can transform your business. Uh, in addition, go check out, if you're looking for a way to simplify your numbers, if you're looking for a way to simplify your tax or looking at you know, simplifying you know, how to be able to make proactive, better decisions around your numbers, connect with them at rsjcpa.com. Uh, they can help you, right? They can help you. They work with billion dollar companies and have clients as billion dollar companies as well as the small business owner as well. And they have a wealth of resources and team members that can help guide you through that process, including exiting, setting up for exit, wealth planning, and a, and a whole lot more. So go to rsjcpa.com. Uh, today, go get Tony's book. It, I mean, we've only had Tony, what, 40 minutes-ish ish to you know, just give people a small glance at the depth of, I mean, your wisdom around this stuff. And you're probably saying to yourself, wow, this guy's different. This guy's not like a typical CPA or accountant, you're right. Their entire company is unique and different, yet you can be confident to know that they'll get it right and help simplify it for you. So again, go check out what they're up to at RSJCPA and get the book at gobeyondnumbers.com uh, right now. Now, Tony, as we uh, kind of wind this down, like what is something I should have asked you that we just didn't have time to squeeze in yet, but I should have asked you, what, what would that be? Maybe that maybe the question is, how do you know that you have the right team around you uh, mm -hmm. of outside consultants to help your business grow, thrive and make you feel happy? So how do you know that you have the right team around you to help you grow and thrive so that you'll be happy? One, one thing we talk about in Sailor the Elephants is something called the trusted advisor formula. Uh, which was not my idea. And I, I refer you back to our download of that book because that helps you measure the power and effectiveness of the people in your life. You cannot do this alone. No one can do it alone. Dan can't do it alone. I don't do it alone. Dan has advisors. I have advisors. How do you know your advisors are working? You have to make a periodic judgment. And the trusted advisor formula is a great way to help measure how to do that. It's beyond the scope of what we're talking about now, but I think you should download the book and you can read it in the chapter. That's awesome. That's awesome. And again, go get the book, say hello to the elephants. You can get access to this tool, the trusted advisor formula to evaluate and assess for yourself uh, as well. Again, you can get that at gobeyondnumbers.com. That's gobeyondnumbers.com. Now, as we, uh, Wind down, Tony, here. What are like one to three action steps you hope our viewers, our listeners take from our, our time together today? I hope, I hope they'll, they'll do what I did very early on in our business and find good writings about how to run and grow your business. Mm. You can start with downloading my book because that's a very good process. Doesn't have to be that process. You can develop your own process. So make sure you have a good structure for delivering your value. Number two, as I said earlier, know your numbers. Know your numbers because you can't think about your social capital, your intellectual capital, your human capital, and your structural capital unless you have numbers to help measure their effectiveness. So that's number two. And number three, 
is enjoy your business. Uh, we don't make money to live. Uh, I mean, we don't we don't live to make money. We we should make money to live a happier life. You want to take care of yourself. You want yourself to grow and you want to be as stress free as possible. But that's admitting that we're living in a stressful time and you need sources of help. You want to find the who's in your life. They're going to ease it. They're going to create lubrication. They're going to make things easier for you. And if you're looking for a team to make the finance side of your world, your business, uh, your empire easier and simpler, check out what Tony's doing. Check out what RSJCPA is doing. You can go to rsjcpa.com. That's rsjcpa.com or get Tony's book today. Say hello to the elephants. You can get that at beyond the numbers.com beyond go beyond numbers.com go beyond numbers.com. Uh, now I want to kind of switch this to personal. Cause you know, you talk about the five capitals, the human side, right? Um, you know, you, you and your wife have been married. How long, Tony? Uh, 51 years, 51 years. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have an amazing business that's been around for decades, you've also been married for 51 years. Now, why did I bring this up? Now, Tony's a client of ours. So I know a lot about Tony, his business and a lot of other things. Um, but I find this so unique, right? Because most entrepreneurs and business owners, A, have a very high divorce rate, right? It's also very rare that you have companies that last decades <laughs> in one particular area, right? You're meeting and hearing from someone who's got both, Right. And I want to give you another side of Tony, which you know he is not aware that I'm going to ask this question, but I know he lives by this, right? It's probably one of the most powerful principles that you and I will ever learn. The most successful people live with this principle, which he demonstrates every single day, which is gratitude, right? So Tony, if you were going to turn to your wife today, right? As you've been on this crazy journey together for 50 plus years in your business for decades and decades and decades and helping so many people you have in finance. And there's, of course, been ups and downs and roller coasters and ebbs and flows, winter seasons, fall seasons, thunderstorms, tornadoes, all of it. If you, if you were going to turn to your wife and say, you know, honey, thank you for how you've allowed me to be, what, what would you thank your wife for? Wow. This is so interesting because uh, I certainly have a lot of theories about what attaches people to people. Uh, certainly with regard to our relationship, uh, I, I think you in any long term relationship, you fall in and out of love any number of times. The one wonderful thing about my wife is she's never constrained me from being me and my quest to inquire and learn new things. She never felt less because I wanted to be more. Mm -hmm. And when you have a relationship with someone who wants you to be the best you can be without worrying about how that reflects on them, that's a very liberating relationship. So I'm very grateful to my wife for that. That's amazing. And thanks for, you know, giving us a glimpse, uh, you know, at that. And I know, uh, you have a daughter you're very proud of. Yes. And, you know, she's done some amazing things. What are some of the values that you hope that your daughter pays forward, carries forward, you know, call it legacy, whatever the, the term might be, that your daughter carries forward as you see it? This is really simple. In, in, in our family, passion is the premium. There is nothing that's worth approaching with any kind of intensity unless you have passion for it. And I find my daughter to be an incredibly passionate person. Uh, she and I wrote a book together called Beautiful Grief about the passing of my oldest son uh, on the verge of his 29th birthday. And, and you can read in that book how passionate she is and how spiritual she is. And, uh, but that's kind of a legacy uh, probably handed down from my father as well, because he loved passionately and intensely. I think I love passionately and intensely. 
Um, and, and I think my daughter does as well. So there you have it. He's Tony Rose, right? If you're inspired by not just the business side of it, going beyond business, so to speak, and going beyond numbers, and you're like, wow, it's pretty unique that I could ever work with, align with, team up with somebody who's got over 50 years of happy marriage, as well as uh, a business that's lasted and through the test of time, especially in the financial world, world for decades and decades. I encourage you, if you're inspired at all, go check out the book, say hello to the elephants. That's, you can get your hands on that today at gobeyondnumbers, gobeyondnumbers.com. Check out rsjcpa.com, rsjcpa.com. Find out where and how they could help you simplify the numbers. Go beyond the numbers like we've been talking about today to apply the principles of the five capitals, to apply the four quadrants and a whole lot more. Um, Tony, it's been a pleasure uh, Thanks, to have you, have you with us. Uh, any last any last words that you'd like to share before we close out? I think when you have a business, you want people around you that are as passionate and concerned as you are. I'm lucky enough to have 60 people here, all of them who know about quadrant planning, who know about the five capitals and who uh, uh, who care as much about the people we work with and each other. As um, as we do, as we do. Oh, and we had a little calm line. Actually, the business is operating today. That's right. All right. So if you're inspired, go check out what Tony's doing and what RSJCPA is doing. RSJCPA.com, RSJCPA.com. Uh, get the book, gobeyondnumbers.com. Uh, he's Tony Rose. I'm Dan Cushell. I encourage you. I, I've got multiple pages of notes here from what Tony has shared. Uh, you can come back to this episode at growththefreedom.com forward slash 330. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash 330. If you never want to miss an episode, go to growththefreedom.com forward slash subscribe. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash subscribe. Seize the day. Make it a great week. We'll see you next time on growththefreedom.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of growththefreedom.com. Are you struggling to get a steady flow of new clients every day? or maybe hit a plateau or hit a wall in growing your business? Well, let's help you solve this problem today. Let's review your business and have a conversation. You can do that for free today at BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. That's BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. In addition, if you're looking for a simple way to implement some of what we've been talking about in today's episode, then I wanna encourage you to get our free small business toolkit. You can get that at Activate dot breakthrough 3x.com that's activate dot breakthrough 3x.com if you'd like access to the special resources and all the show notes for this special episode make sure to visit growth to freedom.com <laughs>